Welcome to Williamson Source. We are here with our first celebrity spotlight. I'm so excited to be talking to the one and only Mr. Keb Mo. Brand new album coming out. We're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. How long have you lived in Williamson County? I have lived in Williamson County exactly four years. And why do you love being in this part of Tennessee? Well, when I moved to Tennessee, this is the first place I saw. I, my, I told my wife, find the house you like and I'll live in it. <laughs> And done deals. She picked out Williamson so you County. Picked the house. I mean, she, she, we, we didn't know anything about Tennessee. We didn't know anything about where they went. We told the realtor. We got a realtor, realtor that was recommended by a friend. Mm -hmm. And when the vet took her, she was introduced by a friend. So she showed my wife some houses, and my wife picked this one. I came and looked at it, and I couldn't find any objections. So then later on, we found out we live in Williamson County. <laughs> And you and said you love it though. You I love being out I here. I love Nashville. I love this made me love Nashville. I was um, just I don't know, just Williamson County. It's, it's different yeah. from Davidson County. It's a little different. Yeah. Um, I would have probably moved to I, I, I don't know where I would have moved to, but I'm glad I didn't pick. Yeah. I did not pick I can't say that I picked Williamson County. I just followed my wife. I followed her out here. She said she wanted to leave LA. And of course I had no choice because we were just Coming and you go, you stand. <laughs> Smart course, man. <laughs> course, packed with my little duffel bag. <laughs> Said, let's go. And yes, we went and and I got here and I got out on the deck and I looked around at all the trees. Yeah. Tennessee is really nice. It is nice. And Williamson County is like you need to grab on the people wave. And, uh, I got here, we got here right before the flood. Oh wow, okay. It was like, you know, literally a day before the flood. And talk to me about that because you know that's a different it's a different time that I think that is really when we saw not only Williamson but Davidson and, and all of Middle Tennessee come together yes. and it made me proud to be a Middle Tennessean and I'm sure at that time you were like yeah this is this is where we were meant to be. Well that that was the timing was really perfect because I really got to see what Tennessee is and after after talking I remember when we were building the studio started building and maybe like three months later, um, one of the carpenters said, well, you know, we, 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 we handled that all on our own. <coughs> we didn't call the federal funds. Yeah, yeah. We, we just did it. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, you know, whining, we didn't hear any. We need help down here, please come get people just came together. And I was like, and so I said, okay, this is the volunteer state. Yeah. It uh -huh. truly is. Truly, truly is. Okay, so we're not going to give away your exact location, but I know that you have been here for a little while, so you probably have got some favorite little hangouts, some places that you like to frequent. What are some of your favorite places in Williamson County that you like to hang out at? Uh, Williamson County? I don't, I have to say, I don't really hang out much. You don't? You stay home? I, I'm, I'm a homebody. I don't go anywhere. When I go out, I'll go down and love this and do this. Down there, <laughs> I go down to the barn, the barn in back when they have things, the new yeah. city roots. Yeah. Um, where's my? I go downtown, downtown Franklin to get an ice cream. I go to the uh, Mellow Mushroom. I go to Franklin Theater to see somebody I like there. Yeah. I'll go to the Baskin and Robbins, the Starbucks, the Main Street. I like Main Street. Yeah. You know, you pull that out. Yeah, I did, didn't I? Main Street. I didn't even know. See, I knew it. I knew there'd be a little you got something some kind of like. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it, it's cool though because it's got that fun vibe of it's alive and vibrant, but there's that nod to history, and you see the architecture, and you know there have been so many that have gone before that have been yes. in that area, but yet everything about it is so today as well. It's a modern day Mayberry. It is. Kind of like upscale, all cool, <laughs> and shops and restaurants. I dig it. I dig it. A modern yeah. day Mayberry. We'll take that. Absolutely. <laughs> and Franklin, that's good stuff. From what, from the beginning until now, first of all, I have a lot more confidence in what I do. 
um, not it's not communism like I think is great. I, it's I'm very I'm braver. I have more bravado as it's called, you know, about the creative process. I trust more. You know, that's what it's, I trust when I feel like something is the way it's supposed to be that it is, and I don't really look at whether anybody's gonna like it or not. I'm the first customer. Yeah. You know, I can sell myself. If I can sell myself on it, then maybe somebody else will. Not always. I mean, I have to about no one else. <laughs> we won't talk. We won't talk about those. And you know, here's the interesting thing. Everybody wants to try to put someone else in a box. So if they're going to put Kev Lowe in a box, are they going to put you in blues? Are they going to put you in Americana? Are they going to put you in more of a folk? Where do you think that you fit? And is there a genre that covers what you think your music is? Okay, I'm too happy for the blues. <laughs> I'm too bluesy for jazz. I'm too uh, too funky for folk. <laughs> I like it, too and funky <laughs> for folk. That's good. And I'm and I'm and I'm too city for country. Good. So you are what you are. I am what I am. But you know, the type of music that you're doing speaks to so many people out there. And obviously, it's something that you've cultivated. It's part of your life experience and, and what you're going to teach you. So who did you grow up on that has influenced what you're doing today? Um, I grew up in a kind of a potpourri of music. Uh, there was my father's church and my mother's church. Mm -hmm. They were separated. My father went to a church with a big organ and it was like spooky and big. Oh! Everything in and my mother went to the Down Home Baptist Church, which oh, is the one yeah. I went to. Every, so I had that experience and that one. I remember because Bobby McFerrin's father, Robert McFerrin, was singing my father's church in LA. And, uh, and so I, um, then I played in the Calypso Steel Band. I was listening to the radio of the stacks in the Motown mm -hmm. and on into the 70s with Earth and Fire and everything there. I listened to, in the, in the late, set, uh, late uh, 60s, Started with uh, the Jimi Hendrix, the Beatles, uh, uh, let's see, uh, uh, all those groups, you know, the, the rock groups. Right, right. Uh, Iron Butterfly, Led Zeppelin, Love Bob it. Dylan, and all that stuff, along with you know Marvin Gaye and Smokey Robinson. So I had this eclectic mix of music, and then then, then I went out on the blues, the Papa John Creek playing rock with Papa John Creek. I was. Um, when I went to Papa John Creek, I had a job delivering flowers. And I listened to all country music for all day. I just listened to country music. So, and what era would that have been? What that era was country? 1976 to um, 78. Okay. Country. I just okay. immersed myself with country music because I thought the writing was so clever. It was so nice. good. And I, didn't hear, I didn't hear that kind of cleverness. I saw hints of that kind of cleverness in the old standards. Really. Clever old standard mm -hmm. in terms of the, the lyrics, the way lyrics were put together. I was really impressed with it. So I thought about if I could put together the funk that I know, the, the groove that I know, put those lyrics together. Yeah. That would be cool. So I started attempting to do that, and but but I didn't really find the ident identity until the early '80s when I started really encountering the blues. So when I added the blues to it, then it started. To I started to find my footing and find something. And I wasn't looking for who I was. I just was just going, I like, I like music now. It just happened. When my record in 1980 flopped, I was like, okay, that's done. I had a record deal. What else can I do? They, they don't like me. <laughs> I still like music. They don't like me. Okay, let's keep going. So I just kept on going. If I was to roll up on your mp3 player on your cd player or even on some of your vinyl who are you listening to now well who are listening to now is four three or four cds i listen to one is plum by jonathan brooks brooks jonathan brooks the other one is the Johnny letters by Herbie Hancock. nice the other one is john Mayer by uh, born and raised Very good. Those are my four albums. Of those four, who would you most like to do a duet with? Oh, anyway, I've already done a duet with Jonathan Swift. But I've got the chance to work with Herbie. Not only recording that, but I've got to play on stage with him. Right. He's going to be on stage with him. So that would be 
that too. He lives so down the road he's somewhere, he's somewhere doesn't he? Yeah. I, I, I know him. Okay. So that leaves that leaves Brad Pitt to be uh, uh, John Mayer. John Mayer. Yeah. Well, either one of those, you know, if you need me to call somebody, I'll put it out on the street. You know. Uh, but I like, you, know, you know what I like to do? I like to put it out there in the public. And you see. There it is. You speak it in truth. I like to speak it in the truth because then I can see it. Because I know this thing works for you people. It does. It does. Let's talk about the difference in making music now. We started talking about this off camera, but in the years that you've been making music, it has evolved exponentially, especially in the last five or six years. You are going to do a concert with Stage It, where it's in your home, and it's broadcast, and people can watch it at their home. So very different. How has that made your craft different? Well, we see all this coming now. We saw all this coming, but it hasn't made my craft any different, but technology has made me able to do things that I couldn't do earlier. Even though the old technology of tape is the better sound. It's like if you I mean, might not remember this very well. Theta was better than VHS. <laughs> but VHS won. Right, right. Because it was just yeah. more consumer friendly. Well digital you can do things that you can't do with film. Even though it's the quality is at this point not as good. And uh, the, the internet has this level of playing field. Mm -hmm. I remember the first time things came Disco, and uh, people got tired of disco. Like, you know, the new age, new age, new age. Mm -hmm. And um, I've seen people toss out things they don't like. I've seen the 80s, the that when they came back to them. So, and all of this actually is real in reality. Americana music right now is really good, but it's real. There's, um, even, even the, uh, the pop music, I think it's getting more in depth. I mean, look what one of the song in the air is like. Royal is like, mm -hmm. Lord, you know? Music is, uh, you know, evolving, changing, deeper. Well, yeah, anyway, I'm so bad at this. <laughs> you know, at the top of the charts, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, I sense a more more of the artists come in than out. Everyone has a CD. Uh, but this thing of the business, how the business of downloading people wanting to get music for free and the generation that came up with just not buying music. The challenge to get their attention and the change is going on is phenomenal. I think it's great that you can be able to work with people and level playing field. And uh, now you don't have to ask them to get music. That was my mantra. When I started in 1992, when I made my little cassette tape, Kevin Moe, Kevin Moore, AKA Kevin Moe, was a decision after uh, my failure in 1980. Okay, I'm ready to get back in time. So glad you so did. So I said, I'm going to make music now, and I'm not going to ask anybody for my money. I'm going to make it just, I can make a cassette, I can go in. So I just made this very convenient cassette. And that's what got me into the Sony deal. But bigger than that, I decided that I was going to make music just on my own terms. For the, for now, the technology and the way business has gone, people can make that decision more readily now. But that decision is crucial in being an artist. You make the decision. This is what I'm going to do. This is not what I want to do. This is not what I think I want to do. This is what I am. And he said, I am, like Will called himself, Will, I am. Will says, I am going to do this. So what I am, Kevin Moe is going to do this. You know, and whatever comes on, comes on, and it does, it does. But you make that decision, and the universe is okay. You were talking about speaking things in the truth and having that come back to you. What is the best piece of advice you ever received and who is it from? It was from a um, conversation I overheard at a restaurant. Uh, weren't talking to me. I overheard it. Okay. <laughs> so 
It was back when I was um, writing songs, trying to write songs as a songwriter to get covered. And just get, get hit. I wasn't really interested in being an artist. I, I love writing. I still do love writing. And this guy said, well, writing, you can't really write for an artist. You have to write your own shit. And, and hopefully that artist will hear it coming in there and give me a cover. You can't write something. And I look back over my catalog in my head for the songs, and there were two songs that I'd really written from the heart. Mm-hmm. And out of my whole songwriting system, before 1992 on tour, there's not, no, there's only two songs I could sing. And I wrote probably about 300 songs. And this is probably only two that you knew were your truth. That's awesome. And were they, they were, those were the ones that spoke to you. Those are the ones I really wrote about something that I wanted to share. The other song was writing something. Well, what about this? Let's talk about this guy. Let's write about this guy in the film. I was making that stuff. And I wasn't digging into my heart, digging into my being vulnerable, willing to share things. Do you ever feel like a song just comes to you? Like it was there? And it presents itself to you. Not that you're writing it, but it's it's almost yeah, like it's offered up. They're floating around. These songs are just floating around. So I don't worry about writing block. And I don't really I practice writing anymore. I, mean, I, I, I know that these subjects are, are, are going around. And you think, well, there's already been a billion songs written. Yes, there have, but life keeps going on in this time we're in now. It's different songs. Terminology, and people change, you know, things evolve. So, yeah, it's, it's okay. This song, especially on a mass scale, this is a long time. This is <laughs> more right there. <laughs> I'll get to you later. You, know. <laughs> you have to have a net to catch them and pull them down. I love it. All right, so let's talk about some fun stuff. Just fun facts with Kim, though. We can okay. flash it up there. What's your favorite dessert? Uh, uh, brownies with uh, chocolate and honey. Or a slice of sweet potato. I just have a hard time finding it. Uh-oh. All right. Email and let him know if you find a sweet potato pie around here. Favorite holiday? Favorite holiday is Thanksgiving. Why? I thought you were going to say sweet potato pie, but that's okay. So thank you. Yeah, Grateful is good. If you didn't live in Middle Tennessee, where would you live? Fort Worth. Why? <laughs> What's your favorite color? At least you didn't say beige. That would have been worse, probably. Okay, favorite car. Favorite car. Uh, 1967 Chevy SS Savelle convertible, 396. Okay. Do you own one yet? Do you want one? <laughs> or a speed one. Awesome. What's the weirdest thing you've ever been asked in an interview? Hmm. Hmm. I don't remember. A lot of weird things. I, I, I guess I don't really consider any questions weird. Good. But I fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> remember, I kind of like weird questions. Good. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, last one. Favorite song on your new album? Somebody hurt you. Why? Because it's just so cool. It's just the church. Like church is like a movie. So all that is, that's what 
children in her life, some other children are going to be seeing the child in the same year. And so that just squashes all that guilt and such kind of Love it. Do you tweet? Uh, do I need to learn how to tweet. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what your Twitter handle is? We'll find it and we'll put it on the bottom of the screen. Yeah. Okay. My wife. <laughs> I mean, Your I wife see, is I a wonderful person. Down, She's I'm a wonderful person. Kedmo yeah, Music. There it is. At Kedmo Music. So tweet. Well, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start tweeting. I love it. I, actually, I started reading my email about six months. Baby steps. Baby steps. We don't want to push you too far. <laughs> tweeting is not hard. I just, no. I, I started tweeting. I couldn't figure out where it was going. It's like, well, you know, because you can. You can link it. it, yeah. In places. And I just tweet all of a sudden and went to, well, hmm. There it is. I didn't know what I was doing. But it's, social it's awesome. media. Social media is, is here. It is. It's like the music has changed. The, uh, the way we communicate changed. It's not going back. No. You know, the occasionally if you don't, no more tweets. Yeah. It's just easier to text, isn't it? Texting and, mm -hmm. and dying. That's why I hear people say, you just use your phone number. Yeah. I, I get to my phone number so I get my email address. That's funny. Okay, good to know. Because they'll, they'll start emailing. Well, you know what? I will get your phone number, and if I find sweet potato pie anywhere in Middle Tennessee, then I will call you and let you know. Is that a deal? That's going to be rough with my mother and all my sisters and sweet potato pie. Oh, well then you've got homemade stuff you don't Alabama, have to worry about so Alabama, Alabama, no, but it's, it's not here, we're in California. Mm -hmm. But sweet potato pie, I'm sure Kroger can really work on do some work on the sweet potato pie. We're looking at you, Kroger. Challenge has been well, thrown I, down. I, 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 this is new and improved, and I'd like it to try. <laughs> You need a little more butter, maybe a little more lemon. Gonna work on it. We're gonna you, work on you it. You know how to do it. You just kind of cheat. You charge extra bucks for it. I love it. I love it. Who will buy it? Absolutely. Okay. Kev Mo, everybody. Williamson County resident, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure talking to you. Brand new album, Blues Americana. You can pick it up. And make sure that you tweet him, Kev Mo Music. It's his Twitter handle, so you can check him out on Twitter. Thank you so much for joining us on the YouTube. Thank you. You're awesome. <laughs>
is yet to come. Well, you know I got a bad, bad feeling that the worst is yet to come. Gotta watch my back. Just looking for a paycheck. No telling what's coming. I ain't worried about that. Well, you know, I got a bad, bad feeling that the worst is yet to come.